Today, we're with the IS, and we're gonna go bumper to bumper and figure out exactly what we need to do to fix this thing. And to do that, we're gonna use our handy dandy to do uwu board. Shindai. missed our last video. This is our 2002 Lexus IS300 in Baja Blast. Uh, we went and got this car out of state for an amazing price and then fixed it and brought it home, uh, which should be in the last video. So if you have not seen that, please go check it out. We had a lot of fun shooting it. It's pretty good. Let's just hop right into it. Yeah, coming up to the front of the car, the, the most obvious thing are these <laughs> hood latches that are broken off the top here and painted over. Like they're just, they don't close. They just, they look horrible. So at the bare minimum, replacing these you know so you know it still it still has the hood latch but not really needed as we come down here <laughs> this is you know the hood's still a little open but this is definitely off and this car has for sure been bonked in the front probably need to fix that that's the grill hangs out of here this doesn't look great um, and if you compare it to the other side it comes down much more flush fixing that will be would be great to kind of kind of bring the front end more in sync with itself. Got the word, Justin? <laughs> in sync, yep. <laughs> Not in Just like the band. <laughs> These headlights are, they've been like painted, like tinted. I thought it was like a film, but it's not. So they're not super dark, but all these lights don't quite work. All right, move in under the hood here. Boom, got that 2JZ, baby. It's the GE for this type of car, the non-turbo version. It still sounds great, can make some pretty decent power, but it doesn't have the forged rod. So uh, that's the main difference between this one and the turbo version. They're, they're still really good engines. Still got the heart and the pride of our, <laughs> of, the, of the build here. But uh, that's not what we're under here. Right here, we can see where it's been donked a little bit. Like this part's been bent in. Right under here, this is just, it's just bent. Just but, bent. Yeah, just bent in. But right here, you can see like it's it's a bolt-in piece. So hopefully, we can just get a replacement one of these and kind of just just straighten the Unbent. the front a little bit. And then you know possibly yeah, you know think about the headlights. If we can get new headlights, or we might just start with the bulbs. Back to the motor. We checked the timing belt. It's in really good condition. I think it was changed on schedule, which is awesome. There's a tiny bit of oil in this channel, which is pretty normal for. Uh, this type of engine, but we'd probably like to do valve cover gaskets and clean it up a little bit and give it some of the TLC that it needs because that's like what happens with cars like these, these project cars. <laughs> Everyone focuses on the exterior stuff, you know, like wheels and paint and all that stuff and they don't really do a lot of like the, just the meticulous maintenance. You know, while it has like a timing belt done and it keeps it, it's still on the road, it you know, the little TLC things, they get neglected. And that's why these cars get harder and harder to, I guess if you purchase a project car like this, you know, why they can be so annoying. The dog barks in stereo. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> yeah, people stereo. focus so much on the looks that they forget that this is a machine that requires little tender loving care. This thing's only saving grace is that it's a Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> so let's people just beat up on them. Like, yeah, people just beat up on these cars and they just, and they take it, take it, take it until they don't. So yeah, and then, Ugh, this thing's not reliable. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing with like, any project car is like, you know, that's kind of why they're so, they can be so scary is because you just don't know what's under the hood. You know, like you look for those binders of maintenance because you know, someone has loved the car and you know, if, if not, it's a, it's a big unknown. And so you just have to take more effort and care and be a little bit slower with your build and stuff like that. And so that's like what, what we're trying to do with this car is show that even though this car, you know, has decent number of miles, 150,000 miles, and I think like six or seven owners, like a lot of people went went through this thing. <laughs> that, you know, like if you if you treat it right, it's still got tons of life to give. So that's like, yeah, that's what we're doing. Moving on. These wheels, the, if, if you can tell from here, the offset is just outrageous. It comes out pretty far. 
I think the you know the OEM offset for the wheels is like you know 45 or 50, and I think these are like 20 or something like that. And they have a spacer on there so that they can clear the brakes. One of the previous owners made these wheels fit, which is which is fine. They look I I like the style of them. They're just kind of pushed out pretty far for my taste. And the other thing about them is they're these are snow tires. And so when we drove this car down here, we just roasted these tires. Like, you know, they're just not meant for this temperature. So, you know, new wheels and tires uh, is definitely high on our wish list here. The other part is as much love as all this stuff got, the suspension is completely shot. Every single ball joint is just hand loose. And you, again, you can see that in the last video where we had to replace the, the spindle, every every ball joint, all the bushings, like they were just totally worn out. I'm sure they're OEM, they were never touched. And that affects the drivability of the car. It, it shakes, it, it rattles and vibrates at speed. And you know, it's not an enjoyable experience to drive the car, which is, you know, it can be very frustrating and it feels old and janky and crappy, but with a little love, I think it'll. this car is supposed to be one of the best handling cars from the 2000s, and I, you know, I want to show that. So we're gonna put some effort into the front suspension and, and tighten it back up and get it rolling really nice. As you can see, you can't see. <laughs> This windshield is like 5% tint. You know, it's it's fun for the privacy, you know, no one can see in here, but this is, it's just kind of crazy. And you cannot drive this car at night. When the sun goes over the horizon, it doesn't matter if you have high beams on, you can't see out of this thing. So we gotta get this tent off and redo the windshield. <laughs> it's gotta go. It's gotta go. <laughs> so, uh, moving into the interior, uh, one of the selling features for me it's complete. The whole car is in here with the exception of a couple little trim pieces, which we'll find in the place. But yeah, it's all here. You know, I want to go through it, clean it up. There's garbage in here from the previous owner. Panda Express, all that stuff. Shout out Panda. <laughs> it's good, it's good. Orange chicken. Leave in the comments, what do you eat from Panda? <laughs> Let us know Let down us, below. Let us know. Like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, this is a 2002, so it suffers from the infamous sticky dash that all IS300 owners know. Uh, the O1s were the only safe ones. You know, it's annoying, but it doesn't bother me too much. I'm just happy it's kind of all here and everything. So just kind of a front to back, clean it out, give it a little bit of love, but uh, it's nice. Another cool thing about this car is it came with a full sound system. It actually sounds pretty good. We're happy with it. Also came with this crazy cool backup camera. It has like backup camera, forwards camera. In fact, uh, has a whole history of crazy videos of the previous owners of these cars and stuff like that. <laughs> so we kind of know what this car was doing <laughs> before uh, it came into our uh, possession, which is a really crazy thing to have as a, <laughs> you know, the new owner of a car. <laughs> Last thing about the interior, uh, this gauge cluster, uh, hopefully it shows up on camera. It does not, it barely lights up. Like there's just this one light here. The rest of it runs dark. Uh, turn signals, it doesn't give any indication of it when they're turning, even though I think the, the actual bulbs work on the exterior of the car. But we'll have to address something in there as well because it just goes with not being able to see and drive this car at night. <laughs> Moving back to the rear of the car, uh, something jumps out immediately. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> Look at <laughs> that be. Didn't even have to tell you where to mm. go. Look at this thing, <laughs> man. I don't, I don't know. Someone um, thought they didn't like it. Yeah, they told. They said exactly where they wanted to cut it, <laughs> and that's as far as they got. And that, yeah, but <laughs> they, 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 it's a freaking fence post that they just like welded on the back of this thing. It's, it sticks out of foot, it's just a freaking shin eater all day. It's just like, <laughs> gosh, like it's it's gotta it's gotta go. So I, I really think it needs a whole new exhaust or at the bare minimum to finish what uh, this last person started and just trim this down right here. It's it 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 this exhaust makes this car sound like a 
like a 2003 VQ off a 350Z. It's like a straight trombone. It's really, really uh, interesting, and, you know, because these 2Js make, uh, they're supposed to make a very iconic noise, but it's, it's screaming Nissan. It's very interesting. So getting that fixed is a priority for us. <laughs> if you come back up just a little bit here, you can see that the lights for the license plate have been sprayed over. So that again lends to not being able to drive this car at night, Whoops. which is pretty annoying. Dealing with that as well is a big deal. And that kind of leads to the full car. The reason why probably a lot of you clicked on this video, you know, this paint job is wild. You know, like it's a, it's a really cool color, stands out, turns a ton of heads. It's a, it's a, it's a 10 foot paint job. From 10 feet away, it looks great. It's sprayed on really, really heavy tons of overspray that's starting to crack and everything inside it sucks you know they did it pretty cheap in that you know they didn't do any door jams anything like that you can see the original silver color of this car and so at some point maybe addressing that and getting some of this paint off and doing it properly would be fabulous we probably love the color the same way you guys like the color or you let us know what you think about this color it's definitely a head turner which is which is fun for a car like this it's it's really fun to have loud colors on cool cars so it's this is like a plus minus if we get to the point if you guys really like these videos and it gets a lot of traction and uh you can definitely be involved in where that goes but it is something that like you know it's it's just information fix not fix i don't know you let us know that's kind of the car, kind of where it sits now. We like, we really just want to get it back to a good car. Yeah, back to how it was in 2002. Yeah. Just get into it and drive. Steering wheel doesn't shake, doesn't pull to the right. Just <laughs> take care of all the stuff everyone decided that didn't need to be done. Yeah. That, Thought this paint job was more important than upper control arms. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because underneath, you know, we made a huge list of, the, of uh, issues today. But underneath all of that is a really, really cool car. This the, this early 2000s IS300, they just don't make cars like this. Like I can't really think of any mid-size four-door sedans with rear-wheel drive and an available manual, not that this one has one. You know, other than a BMW, like they don't make cars like this. So yeah. like, this is a compact car in today's world. Yeah. This, this is, is like a one or a two series. This is a small boy. The, the, the <laughs> wheelbase on this thing is, is like an inch or two off of a GR86. Like Oof. It's, it's a small Four boy. Four doors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. There's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of history in this car and you know, it, it's, it's classic one of a kind. So we definitely just want to give it a new lease on life and, and bring it into this uh, century. <laughs> or this, yeah, this decade. This century. A decade, I'm sorry. I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, we took the horse off. It's no longer a buggy. Yeah. So, but yeah, this is, this is her. Please, you know, like, we hope you join us on this journey to have this experience with this car. Please, you know, like and subscribe and comment. Let us know if we missed anything, you know, like, you know, we're still new to this this vehicle so if there's anything that you think we should be addressing anything please let us know we're excited you know this is a really this is pretty cool new for us so pretty cool yeah anyway thanks guys uh see you in the next one